Hi, I'm Claude, Claude Rouel. Uh, I'm from Belgium. I have spent, I spent my whole life working in vehicle dynamic race car engineering, designing and developing race car, and uh, in many different countries and many different racing series. In 1997, I created Optimum G, which is a growing, uh, slowly but steadily company. And we have three activities. We teach vehicle dynamics in universities and in companies. We consult uh, mainly for race car companies and racing team. And we do simulation software development. I've been teaching 337 seminar in 15 years to close to 9,000 people in 34 different countries at very different kind of people. Minimum people I had in one seminar was one. I had a chief engineer of Ferrari Formula One engine who wanted a vehicle dynamic seminar on his own. And the maximum people was last year in India we had 131 people. So that's the seminar part. We do also in-house seminar, Michelin, Dunlop, Peugeot, BMW, Toyota, Honda, uh, Dampers Company, and so on. Then we do consulting. That's the second activities. Uh, we do, for example, the uh, vehicle dynamic interface between Dunlop Motorsport and their customers. So we work uh, in the American Le Mans series, in the World Endurance Championship, uh, we do tire testing on tire testing machine. We do tire model, mathematical model of the tire to be used in a vehicle dynamic software that we created also. Um, we um, work in uh, IndyCar. We work in V8 Supercar in Australia. We work in Brazil and we work in, in GT touring car in Brazil and Argentina also. Well, I've been a design judge in the United States uh, most of the time, both competition. Uh, this year will be in Michigan and in uh, Nebraska. I've been a design judge in Germany, which is a very nice competition, in Australia. Uh, this year I will also be, like last year, a design judge in the Spain, China, Japan, Brazil, Australia and England. Tips for new teams. Um, I think that contrary to what the people think, Formula student success is not about designing good car. It's about designing good team. So it's about project management and it's about people more than it is about the design, the development and the testing of the car. As I said, success in Formula students about people first. So uh, I have several tips that I want to develop, uh, develop in, in for Formula student. The first one is you need to know the rules. Uh, number one. Number two, what I suggest to people is to make first a brainstorming. Uh, actually two brainstorming. The first one is what are the characteristics of a perfect team, whether perfect is real, realizable, yet that you can achieve that, achievable is, is one thing, uh, but what is the perfect team? And the second brainstorming is what's the perfect car? You can not make a priority or you cannot make the priority if you don't have an extensive list of what is possible. Um, it's about people, then money. It's about people, then machine, not the other way around. So focus about the people. Um, at the same time, uh, you have to realize that once you have done this big list of the dream team and the dream car, after that, you have to land and be realistic. Um, build a A team first and a C car first. And then as your team evolves year after year, 
you make a car which is better and better and then you will end up having an A team and an A car. But I would start first by focusing on people, uh, on uh, people first and communication and project management and so on. In this brainstorming, I would say try to make it on a round table so that you give every people the same importance. Uh, you always have in a group people who are more outspoken than others. So each of the students could have the little Einstein idea. So you want to give these guys who could be less outspoken the possibility to express themselves. Number one. Number two, limit your brainstorming to three hours because after three hours your efficiency is going down. Two hours would be a big uh, limit. And number three, I would say a rule in a brainstorming should be nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. I want to tell you a quick story. A few years ago I said to a team nothing is impossible. Three weeks later, one of the students called me, an American team. He said, you're not going to believe it. We followed your advice and we created a, of a, a list of what we wanted the car to be, the dream car, the perfect car to be. And one of the items was, we, mean, we want to make our own ECU. We all look at each other thinking, we are crazy, we cannot make our own ECU. But because the rule of the game was, we write it down, everything which is possible, nothing is impossible. So we wrote down, wrote down that we wanted to make our own ECU. A few weeks later, this guy went to a family reunion in Pennsylvania. He meets the neighbor of his uncle who told him that he can help them to make an ECU because the guy is the CEO and the owner of a company which is manufacturing motherboard. And he said, by the way, after listening to what Formula Student was about, I'm interested to sponsor you by $10,000. And they made their own ECU. Um, that would not have happened if A, it was impossible. Everything is possible. Number two, it, ha it was written. And number three, there was a plan and a communication of the plan. Of course, this is an exception, and it's a dream, but what is not possible for you in now could be possible in three months, in six months, or next year. How do you want to make a legacy, leave a legacy, when you're going to graduate and the team to progress? Because I needed to say Formula Student Success is a three, four, five years uh, uh, project. Um, I know uh, university who are already working on the 2016 or 2017 car and we are only in 2012. Um, so, A, brainstorming about what's the perfect pers a team and what's the perfect car. Round table, uh, everything is possible and the rest is a lot about project management. You cannot make a list of priority unless you have the whole list of possibilities. Let me add one thing. That you don't have the money. That you don't have the time. That you don't have the education. That you don't have the best vehicle dynamic of CFD or FEA teacher. That's normal. You need to start somewhere. But that you don't have a list of what a good team <clears throat> and a good car should be. Not having that list, not taking the power of your imagination, not using the power of your imagination, and not putting then that list on a paper, for me, is an insult to your own intelligence. The three biggest enemy of success in Formula Student are <coughs> one, the drivers, no offense, but the majority of Formula Students are not good drivers. Uh, majority of Formula Student drivers are not good drivers. Reliability and ability to control your emotion as a team. Drivers. Well, two examples. 
few years ago, I was in uh, Australia. There were two teams there, RMIT, Royal Melbourne Institute of Technology, and um, University of uh, Western Australia, Perth. RMIT had one of their drivers who was an Australian go-kart champion. Very quick driver. The guy goes out, lap time, 510, 50.9, 50.9, 51.0, 50.9. Bang, bang, bang. The guy is making 15 laps within one tenth or two tenths of a second. The second quickest driver had lap time all over the place, and his quickest lap was 1.1 second away from the fastest driver, slower than the fastest driver. And I remember, that's RMIT, and I remember Western Australia telling to me, the, the team um, captain saying to me, Claude, I don't know how we're going to find 1.1 second in the chassis to compensate for their professional driver. The rate of um, finish in endurance in the United States is very low. Do you know how many cars finish endurance in uh, Japan? 75% of the car finish the endurance. Two years ago in Germany, three of the four last car, the top car in Germany, did not finish endurance. We are not asking the 24 hours Formula student, we are asking 24 kilometer. They were not able, three of the top quickest car could not finish the endurance. Why do the Japanese have uh, their car finishing the endurance? Because six weeks before the competition, they have to send a video of their car running. And they have a pre-competition event organized where they have to show up with their car running. So you could see that they finish, they sacrifice, they sacrifice innovation for the sake of reliability. Formula One teams are free 400 people, free 400 million dollars. And they still manage to break things. So who the heck do you think that a Formula student e is and you can go to a competition and your car is going to be reliable. So, how can you have a car reliable? You need to test, test, test. And that's gonna, not going to happen if your car is finished the night before the competition. Success in Formula Student is made of two books. The first book is about the design of the car. And in this book there are different chapters. Concept. You make a one-cylinder, four-cylinder, downforce, no downforce, wings, turbo, no turbo, 10-inch, 13-inch, Goodyear, Hoosier, um, concept. Simple lap time simulation can help you to do that. Number two, simulation. Number three, design. Number four, uh, uh, assembling. Uh, design, uh, number four, sorry, uh, 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 manufacturing, and then number five, assembly. So, concept, simulation, design, uh, manufacturing, and assembly. In the first book, there are five big chapters. You want a good advice on that first book? Do not start chapter two until the end of chapter one is finished. You have gone to the end. Why? I want to tell you a story. There was an Italian team, University of Bologna, I saw them in Spain in 2010. They designed a whole car on Katia. Everything, everything. Not only the chassis, the loom, um, the bodywork, the um, uh, jig to manufacture the wishbone, everything. They built their car in seven weeks. From scratch. They didn't have one thing in the shop. They had everything designed and in order. And they built their car in seven weeks. And they told me with a little bit more experience we could do it in five weeks. Do not start to design, do not start to manufacture and assemble your car when the drawings are not finished. They do that in Formula One because they have so many experience. In Formula One, you're gonna have the engine finish at the same the same day as the chassis. Marvel. How can you make six, uh, three, four hundred people working together? I don't know. 
but they managed to do that. But you don't have this experience of, po of uh, po project management uh, in Formula Student that they have in Formula One. You don't have the same budget either. So um, there are so many cars you see designed in the paddock and said, you can clearly see that they decided to add an anti-roll bar at the last minute. You design a car and said, oh yeah, how are we going to attach the uh, radiator? Uh, where are we going to put the fan? You can really see that the whole concept and the design of the car was not finished when they start to manufacture and assemble it. So I insist, the first book is about uh, concept, simulation, design, manufacturing, assembling. The end of the first book is when you put the car on the ground, you bleed the brakes, the engine is turning, all the gearbox are doing, you have the sticker on the car, you are ready to go testing. No, part two. Testing, braking, I told you, shit are going to happen, you're going to have things which are going to break. Repairing, developing and training your driver. Here's the big secret. In your ideal way, the amount of time, money, resources, energy, focus that you spend on the book two should be equal to the one that you spend in book one. In other words, guys, you should spend six to seven months on book one, designing, manufacturing, and three to four to five months testing the car. If you go to Michigan in May and you are not testing the car in March, you are dead meat. It's not going to work. I'm clear about that. That's the reason why I push the team to make a A team and a C car, and not the other way around. If you try to make a A a car with a C team, the only thing you're going to do is pointing finger at each other. You're going to destroy the moral of the team. Make it simple and efficient. Make a simple car, especially the first year. And then, as the project ev evolves, year after year, improve your team 10%, but improve your car 20 or 25% every year. A team, C car, and then uh, the other way around. So, testing and reliability are together. You need to finish your car at least three to four months before the competition. Things you should prioritize in the design of your car in Formula SA, Formula Student. Uh, number one, you need to know the rules. The rule need to become your night table book. <laughs> you must know the rule by heart. So many things are happening, so many problems are not solved or are scramble to be sold in the in the um, in the paddock of formula student because the guys didn't know the rule number one thing second thing concept to do that you need to make a simple lap time simulation software actually optimum g is going to put on the market free of charge for formula student a lap time simulation software which will help you to decide for a given circuit what is the target in weight? What is the target in grip? If you want downforce or not, how much power is important? What is, how much brake or can or cannot help you to make a lap time? Where do you find the speed in downforce, weight, power, brakes, and so on, so on. So rules, uh, basic, simple point maths, one maths, not four wheels, just one mass simulation around a given circuit. It's amazing what you can learn from there. Next step, tires. You absolutely need to be a member of the TTC, which has been created by Doug Millikan. Uh, you need to understand that your tire. I'm sorry to say something which is so obvious, guys, but the all performance of the car is happening in four little contact patches big like this. Whether it's about putting the power down, where it's about going quick on the skid pad, where it's about um, uh, understeer, oversteer characteristic, where it's about brake, and where it is about 
uh, driver feedback, which are going from the road to the hand of the driver, to the shoulder and the hips and the legs of the driver, all that start with the communication there, the, literally the grip between the surface of the, the, the ground and the tire. So you need to understand the tire. You need to understand slip angle, vertical load, camber, tire pressure sensitivity. Everything is happening there. From there, you can decide your mass distribution. You can decide your um, need of power. You can decide your kinematics. Uh, but I would repeat, rules, lap time, basic lap time simulation, understanding your tire. Then from there, you can decide what's the ideal weight distribution, what's your kinematics, and if you need downforce or mid, you need it. Well, suppose you are sick, you're going to see a doctor, and you hope that the doctor has three things, knowledge, experience, and data. Knowledge, the guy went to school, experience, mm -hmm. for the same knowledge, I, at the same skills, I would prefer the guy with 30 than 5 years of experience as a doctor, and then data. He will want a blood test, he will want an X-ray, he will want uh, some um, MRA or whatever. Well, racing is not very different. You want data, especially if you are a new driver. Now, you can spend a lot of time and a lot of money with data acquisition. Stick with the basics. And the basics start with the driver. Throttle brake, steering. These are the three first factor. And then from there, uh, we have created at Optimum G KPI, Key Performance Indicator, that we teach in our seminar, uh, and of which you can find some information on the, on the internet on our website. Key Performance Indicator, where do you turn the steering wheel? What is the speed at which you turn the steering wheel? How to use the throttle, how to use the brake. So first, same story, people, then machine, driver, then the car. So first thing, simple thing like steering, brake, and throttle. And then after that, one of the next two sensors that you can buy, which could be very useful, are uh, next few sensors you can buy are obviously lateral and longitudinal accelerometer, gyro, Measuring the yaw velocity is very important, and derivating the yaw velocity could give you the yaw acceleration. Very useful. Linear or rotary potentiometer showing you your suspension movement. And then I have to say one thing which is working very, very well is infrared tire temperature sensor, uh, which help you to measure the right Ackermann, if you are in the right direction in your camber, camber variation, tow, tow variation, pressure, and so on. You would be amazed. They are today a uh, sensor company like uh, TechSense, for example, who are putting uh, infrared sensor and their price is reduced by close to 10 um, uh, uh, to help students to understand how to use that. Um, infrared temperature sensor, for example, is something that you can use very well to understand your car. But I would start with the driver, then the, the chassis. One of the questions that design judges, engine, chassis, brakes, composite, downfalls, one of the questions that these judges are asking when they think that they are speaking to a team who know what they are speaking about, is show me your engineering report. In other words, how do you communicate together and especially how do you leave a legacy for the next team, for next year? You need to have a written traces. These are the reason why we choose to go that path in terms of chassis or engine development. These are the mistakes that we made. These are, we think, the right 
or and the wrong choice that we made. That must be written. Because you know what? Once you graduate, two or three years later, the people who will be students and still working on formula students, how are they going to learn from you? How do you leave a legacy without putting in writing what you hope, what uh, your uh, disappointment, what your achievement, what your success was? You need to put engineering report in writing. That's the way you leave a legacy and you make a difference, a, a long-term difference. I think that the biggest thing you can learn from formula student is, again, about project management. Uh, of course, we as engineers, we would like to believe that we can solve the world, we can improve everything with or FEA and CFD and computers and so on. Um, I'm can, I can tell you this, five years from now, whether you have a turbo or not, wings or not, carbon fiber or tubular chassis, roll center above or under the ground, is not going to make a difference. What is going to make a difference is how you work as a team. What you learn in formula student is leadership, is organization skills, is respect, respect of yourself. I mean, you need to sleep enough. You need to not work two hours a day the first month and 22 hours a day the last month. Respect of budget, respect of each other, uh, managing conflict, um, managing people, managing expectation, being realistic, respect of a budget, respect of delivery time, uh, respect of each other. Um, at the end, I can tell you, if you win the formula student, that would be very nice. But in a competition where you have 80 cars, you're going to have one winner. Does that mean that you have 79 losers? Absolutely not. What formula student create is a school for the future. It's learning by doing. That is what formula student is about. But it's not only about the engineering, it's about the people skills, it's about the project management. This world need leaders. And leaders are people who understand each other, who can work together much more than people who are strong in kinematics or in tire modeling or in uh, cylinder head design. Uh, it's first people, then machine, first people, then money. So I think the biggest advantage of formula student is project management, learning how to work together, uh, achievement as a team. Uh, I think that is what formula student is about much more than pure mechanical engineering.